So let's talk about why the square root of two is irrational. For any square on the planet, if it has side lengths a, the diagonal will always be root two times a. And that's true for any square. Creating something that's a length of square root of two is not very hard. If we change the side lengths to one, the diagonal will always be exactly square root of two. So we can very easily produce this, but it's still irrational. So what is irrational? First, if we look at it in decimal form, these numbers will never terminate. They'll never stop and they'll never repeat. This will just keep going on forever in an unpredictable pattern. But how do we know that. We can't possibly check forever. So how do we know that it doesn't eventually repeat? Well, there is a way we know that. So first off, if it does terminate, it can be expressed as a fraction. That's what rational means is it's a ratio. And if it does repeat like four, seven repeating, that can also be expressed as a ratio. And even if that repeating happens later on, that can also be expressed as a ratio of whole numbers. These are all rational numbers because they can all be expressed as a ratio of whole numbers, some P over Q. So the way we're going to prove that square root of two is irrational is we're going to make an assumption that it is rational and then find a contradiction. So we'll say square root of two is equal to some p over q. And then we're going to say p over q is going to be fully simplified. So p and q would have no common factors. So if p and q were six and eight, we'd want to reduce that to three and four and then begin our proof. So there's nothing wrong with it being six over eight, but we don't want to start the proof until we found the lowest common factors, p over q. And this is an important fact, so I'm going to put this in a box. We can square both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, the square root and the two are going to cancel each other out and give us just two. And on our right-hand side, the two exponent is going to distribute to both both the p and the q. So if we multiply both sides by q squared, these two are going to cancel and this side can become 2q squared. q is an integer, that means q squared is also an integer. p squared is equal to 2 times an integer. We know that p squared has to be even. And in other words, p times p is even. p is an integer, it's either got to be odd or even. If we know this is even, that means p has to be even. And that's important, so I'll put a box around it. Let's get rid of all this stuff. Since p is even, we can say p is equal to 2n, where n is some integer. If we square both sides, distribute this exponent 2 to both the 2 and the n, and then 2 squared is equal to 4. So now we have p squared is equal to 4n squared. Well, since n is an integer, that means n squared is also an integer. To simplify things, let's call k n squared, and we can replace this n squared up here with just a k. Let's clean this all up. Now, since p squared is equal to 4k, and this is a p squared up here, we can replace that with 4k. Let's move this stuff down. Now, if we divide both sides by 2, we get q squared is equal to 2k. But once again, we know that k is an integer. That means that q squared has to be even, because it's 2 times some integer. And for the same reason we knew that p was even, we now know that q is even. Let's clean this stuff up. Since p and q are both even, we can say p and q have 2 as a common factor. Let's bring it up. Before we said p and q have no common factors, we show that p and q must have 2 as a common factor. This is a contradiction. Because this contradiction logically followed from our assumption, we know that this assumption was incorrect. And so we can conclude that root 2 is irrational.